Well, hello and welcome to another Dev Nation Live. I'm super excited to have you all here today. We have a large crowd to talk about the future of Java EE. And I know many of us here are kind of new to Java in some cases based on the chat that I've seen happening in the uh, leading up to this presentation. We have people here who do some C-sharp work, moving to C-sharp and .NET Core microservices. And I have to admit, I do like .NET Core. And I've also seen a lot of Python happening in the big data space. There's a lot going on in the JavaScript space. But today, we're here to talk about Java. We do have some previously recorded sessions, though, one that deep dived into JavaScript not too long ago, Enterprise JavaScript. Go check it out at our website. But now we're going to introduce you to Mark Little. We're going to get, get started with Mark Little. He's going to deep dive into what's happening in the Eclipse Foundation and Jakarta EE and Java EE. So Mark, please get started. Thanks. Thanks, Bert. Um, so I'm going to go straight to the slide and get going. There they are. OK, so uh, thanks for the introduction. Uh, as as Burr says, I'm going to do a, a quick whirlwind tour of uh, the future of uh, enterprise Java, um, sometimes called Java EE, and uh, where it's going in the Eclipse Foundation. So if you've been around in the Java industry, uh, even if you haven't used Java EE, uh, you might um, kind of understand this, uh, this little comic that I found online. Um, Java and, and Java EE or J2E before it have been called dead probably more times than, than anything else uh, over the last 20 years. Uh, but you know the reality is actually far from it. Um, you know as this slide shows, uh, Java EE uh, has been around for almost two decades and it's dominated the enterprise middleware scene for many, many years. And you know like it or loathe it, Java EE deployments, do form the backbone of many systems that we take for granted today in healthcare and, and in you know, financial services, for instance. Even many of the more popular frameworks, uh, such as Spring, use uh, components that were developed originally in Java EE uh, or required to be deployed into a Java EE application server. But you know, because Java has been around for so long, it's it's inevitable that new technologies and new languages and frameworks will come along and gather more momentum. And Java e has, for a number of years, had quite an image problem that various implementations have been bloated, that perhaps it's monolithic, not suitable for you know agile development. Uh, not suitable for the next uh, generation of uh, cloud native applications, for instance. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to spend too much time on that, except to say I kind of disagree. But you know, maybe, maybe that's me not being. Uh, you could say maybe I'm not being objective. But there are also some good points made for Java E, at least in terms of how quickly um, you know it's it's taken um, hold in 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 the industry, um, and there are some relevant uh, points about problems with it, such as the, the speed at which it moves. Again, you know, you look at this slide here, and there have been eight or eight releases in 20 years. Uh, many people complain that it, it isn't able to adapt quickly enough to the changes that are going on in the industry, such as you know, Internet of Things or, or, like I said earlier, cloud. And in many ways, that's precisely why you know, at Dev Nation in, in 2016, um, Red Hat, IBM, um, Tommy Tribe, uh, Pyara, and a number of uh, the large Java user groups, such as uh, Sue Java, which is the largest Java user group uh, in, in the world, we, we got together and we announced something called uh, MicroProfile. And the idea about MicroProfile was to try and leverage the good bits of Java E. Uh, and use them in a way that would help uh, next generation microservices developers to to like I said leverage the uh, the enterprise the industry standards that are out there such as enterprise messaging and transactions but without having to have a full blown app server and also to bring in other things from other areas of the open source environment uh, that are perhaps pushing microservices and cloud native development uh, a little bit faster than Java EE was. Uh, including things like Netflix, OSS, and perhaps even uh, Spring Boot. Now, since 2016, you know we've seen a huge amount of community interest and adoption. There are over seven different independent implementations of MicroProfile uh, to this date, 
And the aim, as this slide states, and I'm not going to go through it all uh, word for word, you can have these slides afterwards, was not to throw away Java EE, uh, but to build on the experiences of it. Uh, somebody's playing around with the slides. Uh, please stop. Uh, and drive more innovation upstream through open source collaboration. Uh, another aim was that if we eventually got to a point where we wanted to standardize specific APIs, we'd return to the Java community process, which is the process that has been driving J2E and Java EE before it. Now, again, I don't want to spend too much time on micro profile because I want to get to uh, Jakarta EE, but Last year, because of the sheer amount of adoption that we were seeing and interest around MicroProfile, we decided to move that to the Eclipse Foundation. So everything that we're doing, it's always been upstream anyway, but now it's under the, uh, the banner of the Eclipse Foundation. And in the last 18 months, um, we've, you know, we've announced MicroProfile at DevNation, and we've had this move to, uh, to the Eclipse Foundation, and yet we've also been able to do three major releases of, of Eclipse MicroProfile. We're actually working on the fourth one as I speak. As you can see from, from this slide, some of the things that we've worked on, they, they don't exist in uh, Java EE today. Things like the fault tolerance uh, spec, the metric spec, health check. <clears throat> and again, um, the idea is to, to push these back into a standards effort if and when that becomes necessary. <clears throat> but you know, clearly, there was one company missing from uh, the MicroProfile effort, and that was, that was Oracle. And what what's been going on with Java EE in the in the meantime? Well, you know, Java EE itself uh, has has evolved. Like I said earlier, it's it's evolved slowly. Uh, and again, if you've been around long enough, you'll have heard some of some of the uh, reports of of its death over the last eighteen months, or maybe even two years. Uh, maybe even experienced a, a few of them firsthand. You know, it seemed that Oracle was pulling back from Java EE, possibly even from Java. Uh, there were rumors that a lot of people were being laid off, that um, the, the, the relatively slow movement of um, JSRs, which is how Java E evolves with its specifications, uh, was getting even slower because, uh, because Oracle was, was uh, pulling people off them to work on other things. So, you know, there clearly were uh, rumors of, of this being the end of Java E. But... As I said here, you know, Java EE8 <clears throat> was finalized in September 2017 in time for Java 1. But if we compare what's here in Java EE8 to what we've been doing in MicroProfile, you can see that it's relatively incremental. There's none of the big things that uh, we were working on <clears throat> collaborative, collaboratively upstream with the likes of IBM and Tommy Tribe and, and other uh, big companies and, and small companies and, and also individuals. But also at Java 1 2017, there was another announcement. And I actually think in some ways it's bigger than um, the EE8 announcement. And that was that working behind the scenes, uh, Oracle had uh, reached out to IBM, Red Hat, Tommy Tribe, and, and others to see if there was interest and collaborative efforts. Again, somebody's playing around with slides. <laughs> to, uh, to move Java EE. Uh, to an open source foundation. Uh, at the time, we didn't know what that open source foundation was, uh, but eventually, without um, you know giving it away, um, which I'll talk to in a few slides, it, we we eventually decided to move it to uh, the Eclipse Foundation. And I think it was a pretty big thing for you know for everybody to do. I mean, if if we just stop here for a second and and, and let it sink in, you know, this is this is something that. Sun Microsystems that was driving uh, Java E before the Oracle acquisition didn't do. They open sourced Java with the OpenJDK uh, project, which was a great thing. Uh, but there was always this perception that, you know, if Sun didn't do it, uh, then Oracle would never do it because, you know, they, they clearly were doing the acquisition of Sun to drive uh, revenue. Uh, and why would they give away what they uh, many people perceived as being uh, the, the crown jewels? And yet they did decide that it was the right thing to do at the right time. Uh, all of you know all of the investments that have been made over over those twenty years. If you remember the slide I had earlier from Oracle, from Sun before it, from Red Hat, from IBM, from company companies big and small, including Google, foundations like Apache, all of that uh, effort 
that has gone into making Java EE, you know, this this dominant uh, enterprise Java uh, stack, was basically going to be moved to an open source foundation, and no single company would control it. That 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 is huge. That's really you know the the at the time I said the probably the the only other thing that has happened in the whole Java ecosystem that comes close to it is when Sun uh, created OpenJDK. Like I said, though, at the time when we made the announcement, we didn't know where we were going to go with it. Well, hot on the heels of um, moving Eclipse uh, Micro Profile to the Eclipse Foundation, uh, we decided that we would move it to the Eclipse Foundation. Uh, and the top level project uh, is called E4J. So that's uh, Eclipse Enterprise for Java. But notes, and I'll mention this again in a few slides time, that's not the brand. That's actually a, an, a, a very specific Eclipse thing. That's where all of the projects, all of the source code, things like Glassfish, et cetera, reference implementations, they would reside or they will reside uh, under that top level project, but it is not the brand. So e for js mission is pretty clear. Uh, you know, we are actively working with uh, colleagues in Oracle and Red Hat, uh, sorry, in IBM and, and others upstream to move all of the current EE APIs, reference implementations, and, uh, and TCKs across to the Eclipse Foundation into this um, top-level project, looking for wide uh, community participation, um, transferring ownership, uh, leadership, if you like, of some of these projects from Oracle or IBM or others to um, members of the community. Um, and updating the specs as we go to the latest version of, of, um, of Java. Critically, we also want to update the process by which these things evolve. Now, I mentioned it earlier, but the Java community process is the process that's been in place for 18 years and overseen um, the evolution of uh, Java EE from J2E through to uh, Java EE8. But uh, as I said again earlier, the you know the perception is that this thing moves too slowly. That perhaps it's not as inclusive as it as it should be, um, and it's not necessarily um, as uh, seamless uh, in its interactions with uh, open source communities. Um, so moving uh, just the code and just the RIs and the TCKs to the Eclipse Foundation, but leaving everything under the control of the JCP wouldn't necessarily um, achieve the uh, the kind of things that we want to achieve. So we are working again upstream, completely open and, 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 and no behind closed doors efforts to define a new process that allows uh, everybody to have a say in how these specs evolve, how these implementations evolve as well. And one of the biggest things that we're doing is kind of lifting and shifting uh, all of all of the code that exists, hopefully some of these uh, names like Grizzly and, and Jersey will not necessarily be uh, new to people on this call, but these are these are big code bases that, like I said, power a lot of uh, industries today, and we're moving them all um, and relicensing them to the Eclipse Foundation. So. Um, Here's a for those interested, a, a quite a nice uh, website that the Eclipse Foundation created. Uh, I forgot to put the URL on the web on the actual slide, so I'll mention it here. It's eclipse.org uh, forward slash e for j forward slash status dot php, and it tracks in real time how the specs, how the reference implementations, how the TCKs are moving through that process from uh, being in, in the uh, in the control of Oracle, if you like, across to the uh, to the Eclipse Foundation, and and things move very very quickly, such that um, I you know I pulled that slide together about a week ago, and if you go there now, I know it looks very very different to uh, to what uh, I've I've shown. Now, you know, as I said, E4J is the name of the top level project. It's not the brand name. We ran an open process for people to submit names for the brand, as well as uh, an open process for the logo that would go with it. Um, and there was a vote on both. Um, Jakarta EE is the name that won 
uh, the brand name. So that essentially becomes the new name of Java EE. And the logo is the one you see here, the, the clipper. And I'm actually quite pleased uh, to say that um, that logo was presented, uh, was designed and then presented to the Eclipse Foundation by one of uh, Red Hat's own uh, graphic artists. Okay, so you know, quickly, what's the relationship between Jakarta and Eclipse Micro Profile? Well, it's clear that they both ha are on kind of an over overlapping trajectory at this point, and we do feel that again under the control of both communities, at some point they will come together. These two these two efforts should merge, and Jakarta e should start to evolve in a very similar direction to where Micro Profile was heading, and Micro Profile folds underneath Jakarta EE. But, you know, is it still just Java EE? Because if it is, then, you know, is it still going to have the perception uh, issues that, that we saw uh, and I described earlier? Because despite the name change, you know, at least initially, the technology and the specs are just the same as they were last year. So, so we've got to address that perception issue. And the best way of, of addressing it is by, you know, driving the specs and, and the reference implementations in the right direction. I mentioned what we've done with MicroProfile. I do believe, given the adoption we're seeing with that, that um, there's a lot of lessons to be learned for Jakarta E, and hopefully we are starting to have that cross-pollination. Um, and, and it's also interesting to note that the no there are a number of companies that have publicly joined Jakarta E that never joined Java EE, or at least didn't join in a very uh, active way. So one is Pivotal, for instance. Another is Lightbend, uh, who aren't even typically in the Java market. They're, they're much more in the, in the Scala uh, arena. So it's great to see that wider community adoption. Um, but really, what I want to let you guys know and, and hopefully um, instill in you is that this is not Java EE of old. We are, we're rapidly evolving things. We are really starting to look to uh, address feature, feature gaps that um, we've had called out over the years, things like you know, asynchronous APIs, making it cloud native, removing legacy things like Cobra and IOP, which we started to do under Java EE. Um, there are going to be no field of use restrictions, which some people may know about. Um, and I, I don't really have time to go into that too much. But how we evolve it is going to be driven by the community. It's not going to be driven by one vendor or, or a few vendors who happen to you know, get together and, and, and make some votes on a particular direction. The community has got to get uh, together and has a great opportunity to define where we go in the future. And... You know, some clearly some uh, areas that are influencing things are microservices. They influence directly where we went with micro uh, profile. Uh, we've been seeing Java E app servers used in microservices for a number of years anyway, but um, there's a lot more that we can do and we should do. And I think this is a this is already if you look at the um, Jakarta E. Um, uh, community um, mailing list, you'll see a lot of discussions on this, as well as the discussions that are happening on, on micro profile. Another, I'm, I'm, the next few slides are really just to give you an idea of some of the conversations that we're already having, which we wouldn't have had in the job, uh, in the JCP and the Java EE world. And again, to try and you know, in, in, get, get everybody here, hopefully so interested that, you know, you want to, either get involved in some of these things directly or come in and, and propose some new areas based on your own experiences. But where do transactions go in microservices? This is something I, I, I like myself because, you know, we're, um, my background is around transactions, but uh, traditional asset transactions, they probably or definitely don't have a role in, in microservices to the degree they had in Java EE. We've got to evolve that. There's work going on with, with the Lightbend folks um, and others. Uh, over the last few years as well around uh, Saga-based transactions. It, it's an active area, and if you have an interest in that, please get involved. Again, um, just talking about the, uh, the, the Lightbend people, but uh, how do we do asynchronous reactive in enterprise Java? This is not something that your traditional Java EE specifications, let alone uh, implementations, are, are geared to do. So the conversations are already on about how we would do that uh, with um, by modifying the specs and then by getting involved and, and defining new uh, APIs, defining uh, new reference implementations. 
Uh, it was originally kicked off by uh, um, James Roper and his colleagues from Lightbend. Um, there's a lot of activity now with uh, some of the Eclipse Vertex team, if anybody has heard of that. But again, it just goes to the point of how this is a collaborative thing. It's not being driven by one vendor or a, you know, a smaller number of vendors. There's, there's a lot of interest from the wider community as well. Um, and Red Pipe is, is another effort that's feeding into jucatory uh, uh, and micro profile, at least in terms of conversations and experience. Uh, what we want to do with Jukatri is exactly what we've been doing with Eclipse Micro Profile and, and having conversations based around experiences. This is why we didn't go originally to uh, in Micro Profile to start talking about standardizing first. Uh, the worst standards are the ones that aren't based on, sta on, on experience. So everything that we're doing in Micro Profile and hence everything I think we really need to do in, in, in Jukatri needs to be driven through experiences. And, and the more community members we have involved, the better. You don't have to bring code. You don't have to bring uh, your time to actually uh, start to, uh, to hack on a spec or, or, a, uh, or a reference implementation. You can come and have just as much of an impact, if not, not, if not more, by bringing your, your point of view on a particular topic and, and even kicking off a particular topic and just leading that and then getting other people from other companies and other organizations and other Java user groups, for instance, to, to help drive that in a particular direction. Um, clearly, over the last few years, we've seen a lot of um, interest in uh, Linux containers such as Docker and then Kubernetes as the de facto standard for orchestration of those containers. Uh, last year, um, we saw a, a new kid on the block, if you like, uh, a sidecar approach, which had been around for a few, you know, for about six months or so in, in other guises. But then Istio came on the scene and really kind of took the the limelight and 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 drove a lot of the interest in that how does you know not only does how do, how do linux uh, containers in kubernetes uh, fit into the uh, jukatri e world but you know how does istio work with jukatri e can we offload some capabilities that we would typically have found in your your traditional app server into into uh, kubernetes and, and istio uh, and here are some efforts. Uh, I mean, this is around Wildfly Swarm, which is our, our own Red Hat implementation of Eclipse Micro Profile. But I show this because just to give you an indication, these are, again, the kind of wider, more cloud native discussions that we're having as a community upstream and then feeding into Jakarta EE. So hopefully, you know, I've given you a whirlwind tour of, of what's brought us to where we are. I really do think that, uh, you know, Jakarta offers us a, a great opportunity to evolve a series of specs and a series of um, reference implementations and potentially, you know, a, a series of uh, implementations of the whole spec suite in a direction that makes uh, a lot more sense for where we are today as, a, as an enterprise Java community. But it fails or succeeds based on getting the community involved. And that, as I said before, that, that involvement can range from coming in and telling us about use cases to all the way through to giving, you know, giving your time to you know, donate code or donate your time to, to work on existing code. We need we need you, and you know. Hopefully, you know. I've, I've kind of given you an idea of some areas where you could come and get involved. These, it's not an exclusive list. Go to the Eclipse uh, website, join. It's free to join. There's no membership fees. You can get involved uh, five seconds after this talk uh, ends, and just read the mail archives. Jump in uh, if you want to ask for help uh, about areas where maybe you know you you can contribute uh, it's a very welcoming community it's a very large community now and you know the more the merrier so with that said uh i hopefully have left a bit of time for some questions very good and actually mark uh we have a little bit of discussion to have but i want to make sure we get the link correct for the eclipse foundation and jakarta ee i have one i found here because uh, that already is the first question it's like okay great i want to get involved how do i find out more about the Jakarta EE effort, what is the right mailing list to join, and things like that. Uh, so let me, uh, can I post something in the in the chat? 
Let me see if that works. Yeah, just uh, add it to the chat tab. Uh, does that work? Let's see here. Yeah, there we go. I'll okay. On the E4J sure. side. Fantastic. So that, that will take you to the E4J FAQ. Um, and like I said, that's that's kind of a an artifact of the Eclipse Foundation. So that's where everything is happening that links off everything. But um, there's, you know, if you if you go from there, uh, there's another one talking about Jakarta E F A Q directly. Another way to get involved, um, you know, if you if you want to reach out to me directly, I'm more than happy to field questions and and point you in the right direction. Okay. Uh, a couple questions here that I think are really important that we want to make sure we cover. One is, will there be a large scale repackaging? You know, there's that Java X aspect of Java EU. Do you think there's any kind of, I assume that's the kind of packaging yeah. people are worried about because that does impact their code. So what Oracle have, have said, and they've been very public about this. So again, you can, you can Google it or find it in the mailing lists. Uh, anything that's currently under the Java X package will stay under the Java X package, but new things, so, you know, for instance, if we take the, the fault tolerance spec from MicroProfile and push that into uh, Jakarta EE, that would not fall under the Java X package. That would need to be a new uh, package. And we don't know what that package is yet. Um, again, we're, gonna we're working on that in, in one of the working groups uh, upstream in the Jakarta EE effort. Okay. And there was another question related to certifications for things like DOD, uh, you know, so what I take from that question is at what point will we see large customers like the big government DOD start requiring, you know, certain seals of approval, if you will, from the Jakarta E movement? Do you have any idea on that one? Um, <laughs> it's a good question. Um, I think implicitly probably, um, the, I should have said the first release of Jakarta E will be Jakarta E8, I think I got the numbering right. Um, and that will be essentially the same as Java E8. So what we're doing, the lift and shift is to take Java E8, move it across to Eclipse, becomes Jakarta E8, and it will be identical. Um, so any certification that was a, for Java E8 should, in theory, Hap, uh, happen naturally with Jakarta E8. As we go forward, though, and evolve things, um, I think it's going to, we'll all clearly need a recertification, and that's going to be driven by, um, you know, amount of interest. Maybe it'll be done something that uh, particular vendors will get involved with, as often seems to be the case with certification. But, um, you know, that's probably the best answer I have for you at the moment. It's a bit hazy after the initial release. Okay. Uh, good question. I also see here related to Angular, React, and other really awesome client-side libraries we see for building MVC-style applications. What might happen with Java Server Faces? Do you have any feeling on uh, Java the, Server Faces? Yeah, so the honest answer, um, I won't focus specifically on Java Server Faces, but I'll say the honest answer for Java Server Faces, JMS, JPA, the orb, uh, anything you you name a component in Java EE, and the answer to its future is it depends on where the community wants to take it. It's no longer the domain of Oracle to define, or Red Hat to define, or IBM to define, or that collection of companies to define, and then you know the community finds out after after the decision has been made. It really is down to the community. And, and if you have a, you can get involved in every single one of these specs now. You just need to become an Eclipse member and sign up and then start making commits. Okay. And there was a great question related to MVC, and I think it falls in the exact same category. You know, I know I've seen a lot of excitement around the MVC specification myself out in the community. Uh, do you have any personal feeling about MVC, Mark? So, um, uh, MVC is, there were a number of specs that did not fall under uh, Oracle's uh, control. MVC was one of them. And uh, the MVC lead is is one of the uh, PMC chairs, along with myself on Jakarta EE. And one of the first things that he did was donate MVC to the Eclipse Foundation. So that's now already part of Jakarta EE, and it will be part of the, you know, the evolution. Where it goes after that, again, is going to be down to the community. But you're right; there's been an awful lot of interest from it, and and there was uh, a lot of interest at um, you know some of the some of the recent Java conferences like Java Land. 
Okay. And there's, uh, we'll take this one final question because I think it's a very good one. And in the, in the case of traditional Java EE, it had a very definitive packaging structure. You know, your ears, your wars, your jars. What about in this world of microservices? Yeah. What about the world of containers and, in, and even a containerless architecture? What are your thoughts on that? That is a great question. And rather than me answer it, I will tell you that is actually a topic that is going on now in the uh, Jakarta EE community mailing list. It's a long, long thread, and it's about what happens to ears going forward. Um, so, not wanting to, I, I, I deliberately don't want to answer it because I want to encourage at least the person who asked the question to become an Eclipse Jakarta EE member and get involved in that conversation. Okay, fantastic. So Ryan, we're talking to you there. Uh, and also don't forget to check out Microprofile.io. There is another way of thinking through packaging in terms of Java e libraries in the case of Microprofile.io. So all that is happening right now in that community. Well, we are out of time. I thank you so much for your questions. We had a huge audience today and a lot of chat, uh, even including conversations around what do I learn as far as being a new programmer? I apologize, we couldn't really drill down on some of those things, try to stay on topic. Some questions around Spring and how Spring is integrated with this. Uh, but overall, fantastic discussion. Thank you so much. Make sure to check out those links that we provided in the chat and in the Q&A tab. And definitely join our community and show up again for another Dev Nation Live. Thank you so much, Mark, for having us today, kind of hanging out with us. And don't forget, we have a first Thanks and third Tuesday of this event. Awesome stuff. Thank you so much, Mark.